What up? Hello everyone, I'm Corey Johnson. Thank you for coming to the Red Wave YouTube channel. This is the first video in the Red Wave YouTube channel. So hopefully this will be the suckiest and then I'll get a little better as I go along. Um, basically in this video, I'm gonna talk about my walking away from the Democratic Party and my entrance into the conservative movement, the Republican Party, and conservative ideas, and kind of how that journey was for me. Um, like so many people after this last election or prior to this last election in 2020, um, we, we just kind of got fed up with the Democratic Party. And the walk away movement was really going strong and it, it, it opened me up as I learned a little bit more about the online debate, it opened me up to conservative ideas that I had not even really taken a look at. And then it ended up with me just prior to the election, walking away from the Democratic Party, which at that point I had been a member of for since I was 18, let's see, I was 35. Uh, so 17 years, is that right? Oh my gosh, I'm not that old, am I? <laughs> it's gotta be 17 years, give or take, right? Um, and that's kind of what happened to me is I, I, I would join that walk away movement and I just, I did it, I couldn't in good conscience. So I'm gonna tell that story a little bit and if maybe if it matches your own story, um, that's great. I expect a lot of people are going to be angry. That's fine as well. Um, I just feel like we live in this era. We have this great tool called YouTube where we can build a community, share ideas. Um, I really not trying to upset anyone or cause any panic. I'm only telling my story. If that upsets people, then that's okay. I mean, I, it's, this isn't a safe space. I mean, it's, it's the internet. So uh, hopefully you're okay being exposed to new ideas. Um, so really just want to preface that of saying I'm not doing this to offend anyone. Just trying to express myself and express and tell my story. Maybe it can help someone who's struggling with the same things. I, it's very difficult to speak up. I've been wanting to make this video for about a year now. And I just couldn't do it because I'm afraid. Honestly, I think so many people are like me. I'm afraid that people on the left are going to come after me. And I'm a nobody. I'm not, a, I mean, I am, I'm, I'm less than a nobody. If average is here, I probably fall somewhere down here. I don't think I'm even very average. So there's no need to come after me, but I'm still scared that people will get upset and come after me for it. And because everything is so emotional, it's it's not a, and politics has changed. It wasn't as emotional in my youth and it's, it's very emotional now. Um, right now I'm 36, so I'm, if you're around my age, you probably remember when it wasn't as emotional. We did care about political ideas, but it wasn't as emotional. So that's who I am. I'm a 36 year old guy from Texas. Um, work an average job, pretty, pretty boring guy. Um, I go to bed at eight o'clock. I have a little teacup Yorkie. I just got married. There's really nothing else that's very exciting about me. Um, I am a, a Christian. I am recently renewed my faith in Christianity. And um, so I've made, you know, in the years when I was not so walking the right path. I know I made a lot of mistakes and errors. So uh, if I hurt you during that time, I just want to apologize. And, and I wasn't myself and I'm not like a crack addict or anything, but I did have my problems with alcohol. That caused me to do a lot of dumb things. So anyway, that's me, just an, an average guy. I'm a college graduate, Texas A&M Commerce, class of 2015, uh, I'm college grad. Um, I'd say I just got married beautiful wife, no children yet. Uh, we hope to have some. Um, I have a wonderful family. I have a brother and a sister. I'm the oldest. And that's, you know, I'm just, just a normal middle-aged guy. So 
nothing exciting there. But that's a little bit about me. Uh, you can find me on my Twitter handle, CWJohnson85. I think I have 11 followers. I would love to make it 12. So go on over there and follow me. I, I will try to get a little more active on Twitter. And you can also, um, you know, leave a comment or something like that, and I'll reach back out as well. Uh, if you would like and subscribe, that'd be great because I am trying to grow the channel. I do want to have uh, more conservative talk and discussion, not just solo videos, but uh, I want to kind of expand from there. But, all right, let's get into the interesting part. Uh, my background in the Democratic Party. So I became a Democrat probably to make my dad mad right, right about 17. Um, the Democratic Party does have a habit of getting young people, so they got me when I was young. But it was a very different party back then. I think the issues that we were focused mainly on is we didn't want the wars in the Middle East then. So the Democratic Party and young people, we, we were coming out kind of against those wars. It was not long, so it was uh, about 2002. So it was not long after 9-11 and um, people were a little torn on whether or not we should go. We didn't know exactly. I said there was kind of mixed reviews about whether or not which country the terrorists were from behind 9-11. There was also talk about was the government behind it. I have to say I engaged in that kind of talk quite a bit. Um, still not entirely convinced, so I don't know. We can't open up that can of worms here, but um, it was out there, and I think it's, it's a decently commonly held belief, so uh, that was me. Um, we definitely wanted gay marriage. I'm still, even though I've left the Democratic Party, I'm very much pro-gay marriage, but that was a that was still a big issue then, and I was very much pro-gay marriage. Um, still am. I would love it if the government just kept their nose out of marriage altogether. That would be my preferred option, but we don't live in a fairy tale land. This is where we are, so I think that um, same-sex couples should have the right to get married. I'm not ashamed to say that, and I will debate anybody on that who wants to, because you know, even as even as a Christian. Yeah, I, I still think that um, marriage is, you know, that monogamy and, and, and family life are still what God wants for us, in a sense. So, not in a sense, but I, so I'm, I'm pro-gay marriage. Come at me, bro. I'm fine. I'm, I'm fine. I've, I've thought about that, that belief seven different ways from Sunday, and even with my real recent kind of conversion back into my faith, I'm still okay saying that. I, I think that um, people should have the right to marry who they want. And that's just that's just the way of it. I don't think especially the government should ever be able to tell anyone they can't marry someone that they're in love with. Regard, you know, because I think that's mixing politics and, and religion a little too much in my opinion. And church and state are supposed to be separate and that's a big one. But that's that's kind of me and I have been a very faithful member. I've voted blue across the line. Um, I've walked the path of the party. So that's basically it. I mean, I, leading into my life, I, I was pretty pretty far on the left. I don't know if I ever, I'm sure I've considered a lot of Marxist ideas um, in my life. I'm sure that I was kind of I'm sure that I uh, probably was pro some Marx. I don't think I would ever call myself that I ever got to the point where I was a full-on socialist. Um, but certainly some socialistic ideas, yes, probably came out of my mouth and into conversations that I had, absolutely. Um, well, I kind of missed it whenever this recently the, Dem the Democratic Party has become much more socialist. So I sort of missed that movement um, when that was considered kind of far, far left. You didn't ever go to that that far, but you you know you didn't want to trust the conservatives because they were they were party poopers. And when you're young, you want to have a party. You don't want anyone telling you you can't. So yeah, and I was a full on Democrat. Um, and almost every sense of the word. I, I think I wasn't as radical as it is today. And we'll get into that. So what changed? I think what changed for a lot of people is the pandemic. Um, 
I was not, I definitely did not vote for Trump in the first election. Definitely not. Um, I definitely didn't think he should run. I thought it, a lot of things that he did in the beginning were embarrassing. And I'll admit it, come at me. I mean, I've changed my mind since on some of the issues, but I have was not pro-Trump. I, I definitely did not vote for him. I was, I was hill dog all the way. And I do regret that now, but um, because I've learned a lot more. Um, we're, we're a nation of tribes. You know, we pick our teams, we pick our tribes, and we stick to our tribes. And you, you have to pick a team. So I pick that team, and then I've switched teams. But just so you know, you can always switch. You don't have to stay on your team if you don't like what your team does. And I'm going to say this, even though I've, I've become a Republican now, there are definitely things I don't agree with in the Republican Party. So there are, um, I don't, you know, you're on a team, you have to vote red or blue. I understand that. I would love to see third parties rise up. You know, a libertarian, a stronger libertarian party, I think would be great. However, that just seems to divide conservatives. So it's, it's tough. And I get that. So I didn't vote for Trump. The pandemic came. And I got to admit, I started to see and think, hey, this Trump guy is doing, d during the pandemic especially, because all of our eyes were fixed on the federal government. Before you wake up, you read your news story, you, you know, the government is there, you agree with some things, you don't agree with some things. But the pandemic, it, every single day, all of us, I, you can't tell me you didn't, every single day, we are feasting on news. Uh, news became the most important thing. Every single thing the government did, especially the federal government, you were all over it. But also local government, too. Started taking a look at what these local policies were. Uh, being from Texas, but be, uh, live in Austin. So we there's, you know, there's some political turmoil around here, absolutely. And, and during that time, I, I actually... That was maybe the first time when I really saw Trump... I would watch the full news briefings. I would watch the full, um, every speech that he would give and things. I would watch the whole thing before, I think like most of America, we were kind of just getting sound bites and news stories from whatever media source that was in our political camp that just kind of told us what we wanted to hear. Um, and so that also started to change my mind about Trump a little bit, not, not entirely, um, but working from home. So I was, I was, I worked for big tech and I mean, big, big tech. I won't say names. I worked for a big tech company at that time. Uh, and they were very great to me. They, we, you know, they allowed us all to go home. They cared about our safety first and foremost. So I won't, I can't say anything bad about being an employee there. It was, it was really great. And I felt like they really cared and they allowed us to go work from home. I was fortunate enough to have a job where I could work from home. Um, we went home and then when you're working at home and I, uh, you have time to start podcasting. And so podcasting, you know, and when you're in the office in the cubes, it's not really something you want to always be doing sitting there with your headphones on. It doesn't always look the greatest. It's not, I, it's not in any way, um, not allowed, I guess that's not wrong, but you know, just want to seem like you're approachable that kind of thing. So I, you know, but when I got out, you know, I we really saw as, as Trump was going into that second election, the kind of rise of right-wing podcasters and and YouTube channels and so you saw like I saw like PragerU was coming up and The Daily Wire, The Rubin Report, these kind of the now really popular right-wing things were really just kind of rolling into the pandemic, they were really, I think, getting more popular. Um, I don't have the data on that. I mean, maybe they were popular before. I just never really watched. And maybe they were because there was a lot of that. There was a lot of it. And uh, so I start really having some ideas challenged. Of course, at first, when I start to listen to these things, I'm like, no, no, no. But when you start to listen to them a little more and more, you're like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It does seem to be a little bit more what the founders had in mind. It's more in line with the Constitution. Some of these ideas are 
it's hard to argue against. Some of them are so common sense that I said, okay, well, that challenges me quite a bit. Um, and then you had kind of a dual thing happening, I think, for me personally. I saw, I felt this rise of right-wing media, which exposed a lot of people to ideas that did not exist. But, or just, did not exist, but they just weren't as readily available online. You know, the, the left had kind of owned the internet space for that at that time and a good portion of the mainstream media as well they had owned that so it just wasn't as heard of um once it came around you know those ideas they spread they're they're sometimes they're really hard to combat and then i had to take a look at you know what my own beliefs were where where did my beliefs really stand where do they really align that, that happened with, with kind of hearing right-wing media, listening to conservative ideas, definitely. Um, like Thomas Sowell, when I read, I later read his book, Discrimination Disparities, right over there in my bookshelf. It'll stay there forever. Um, that book blew the top off my brain. But another thing happened, and that was the radicalization of the Democratic Party. So I will, it, it's, it's, I'm one of those people that, that maybe thinks, did the Democratic, did I leave the Democratic Party or did it slide me out of existence? So I, I don't know if I changed a ton of my political views, but as the Democratic Party slid, a lot of us, and I was just one of those people that were kind of always in the middle, but a little left, well, that line slid. So, I mean, if I'm here, and then all of a sudden it starts to go that way. Well, now I'm not in the, you know, so it, I'm not in the party anymore. I'm not in that line. I'm in a new place. I didn't move as much. I was moved um, a little bit. Now I did do say I did, I did move some. Um, more to the sense of clarification and education on ideas that I'd previously had. Some of those changed. Um... I became, I became, you know, pro-life, for example. That was a, probably the only big, big switch that I made. Uh, before, I don't know if I was as much pro-choice as much as I really didn't think about it as much. Uh, it's not, I'm a man. It's not as big of an issue for us. So it's not an issue I really found myself dabbling in. Um, and then the, the biggest change was probably fiscally. Uh, the biggest change was my belief in government's ability to fix anything. That changed pretty, pretty radical. That was the biggest radical change. Prior to that, when I was in the Democratic Party, my thought process was the government, we need to get them to fix every single problem that we have in this country. I could just list the problems and go, and all of them, I just laid at the feet of the government and said, well, we've got to get a program. We've got to get a thing. We've got to get a, you know. We, we need something. Government save us. And as I learned a little bit more, I learned that not only is that a bad idea, it's a terrible idea in most cases. The government breaks more than they fix quite often. So I lost my faith in, in government, especially the federal government, trying to fix our problems. And I lean more toward um, fiscally con being fiscally conservative. The idea that the markets need to correct things, that if government comes in and dabbles with the markets, it, it perverts the markets and then the markets don't function correctly. Um, and if you see that on too massive a scale, we've got problems. Um, I saw overtaxation being a problem and still do. Uh, a lot of things like that, I'll say, is fiscally those policies started to make a lot more sense to me. Um, and that really flipped my head as well, because before, when there were problems, the Democratic Party said, we can fix it. Give it to us. Give it to the government. We'll, we'll, what we need is policies and policies and policies and laws and regulations. And that started to become a pretty big turnoff to me, Democratic Party. Sorry. Um, I will say with the rise in sort of trans issues, definitely 
caused me to take a step back because it's muddy water. Uh, it's not as cut and dry as we like to make it. And, and I don't think I'll ever really discuss it on this channel. So maybe that changes, but probably not. So if you're looking for the Corey owns trans activist thing, it's just never going to happen. I mean, I, I think that is, that is a landmine. I don't tend to touch too much, but it became right at the forefront. And I, I tend to lean on what some conservatives have said about the issue. I want uh, slow policy in that area. I think we need to think very carefully. Uh, wording means everything. I'm an English major, so I understand that it is the language of the laws that we need to s tread very slowly and very lightly on. And I'm not saying we don't need to provide rights for people who do identify as trans. I'm saying we need to ensure that those rights don't trample the rights of everyone else. So that's kind of what I'll say. I think that the devil's in the details when we talk about policies and laws dealing with transgender issues and that we can come to agreements that make everyone comfortable because I think everyone in this country deserves freedom and deserves to feel as safe as they possibly can in the sense that they keep their job, they have their homes, they're allowed to function in society with a degree of normalcy. I do believe that there are compromises that need to be made, that accommodations can be made without radically throwing out the playbook of binary genders. We can do that. There is a way to do it. And it, and that's kind of why I think it's important that you have a progressive and a conservative party. It's the thing that's been a big strength to our country. Progressives say, yes, yes, yes. Conservatives say, no, no, no. Slow down. Think this through. You're not thinking. It's sort of that left brain, right brain thing where, where we need a little bit of both. We need people saying, whoa, let's move. But let's move with a degree of slowness so that we don't make too many mistakes too fast. And then in the same sense, we need a progressive party because there are changes that need to be made. And we want someone saying, yes, yes, yes. Let's do, you know, let's go move forward ahead. You need both. There needs to be that duality. And I believe that. And even as a conservative, I believe that. I believed it as, as when I was a, a liberal. So I think we can have that. I think with, when it comes to the transgender issue, and we can have that, but that was a that was a one of the bigger issues that arose, um, in which I leaned a little more toward the right. I say a little on that one; it's very little. Like I said, I'm pro gay marriage, so I have some issues, you know. But I I lean a little more toward the conservative idea. Of we don't need to throw out the idea of binary gender completely. Uh, there are. In order to have a functioning society, we need biology, we need the ideas of gender to some degree. Can we change what those roles are? And should we? Absolutely. Every person is free to live their gender roles the way that they want. And I have the kind of marriage where, you know, we don't get hung up on that kind of thing. Um, we... We do what we need to do to, to kind of function and that's it. But we don't get hung up on that's woman's work or that's man's work, that kind of thing. Um, so I believe we can give there. Oh gosh, I said I wasn't going to talk about the trans issue and then I just did it. Sorry. Um, no one's going to see this anyway because this is the first video in the channel. So it'll go to exactly no people. Um, all right, so these issues started to come out during the pandemic. Also, at the same time, this, these conservative ideas entered my space, and I was forced to confront the ideas and, and to really decide where do I land. Um, and ultimately, I decided through it all, hey, this is not, I'm no longer a Democrat. I'm no longer a liberal. I, I am now conservative. And, and as my ideas were put to the test, I ended up lining up on the conservative side. Not far right more center right, almost maybe even left right, somewhere right in there. Um, but that's where I ended up. And then this tribalness we have going on, you're on a team. You, I mean, I'm sorry, even, even if you try to keep your nose clean, 
it doesn't it's not going to do you any good you you have to pick a team and that's just kind of where we are in this tribal mess that we're in so boom i'm locked in you know so this is kind of approaching the election right before prior to when that's when i decided hey you know this is i can't call myself a democrat anymore i don't agree with these things i can't call myself a liberal anymore because i don't agree with this this and this my faith had come back into my life and so even at that point you know as i was making a lot of changes personally and considering you know personal responsibility which in christianity is a big thing that you are now this ideas of these ideas of right and wrong really come into the foreplay um the foreplay the forefront the foreplay right and wrong come into the foreplay please anyone who wants to make a funny reel of this please just chop that part out because it's the best that's the best blooper of all so anyway i'm over here i've now said this is just prior to the election so um mid 2020 something like that and i'm like okay I, i've changed teams and here comes the election i'm like, okay well i'm gonna go i'm voting for trump he wasn't my favorite um he was, I wouldn't have voted for him in the, in the first election, but now I can see what the real agenda of the Democratic Party was starting to be. And it was starting to be much more radical, even though we put Joe Biden in, who was supposed to be moderate, and maybe he is, but his cabinet and the Democratic Party is far from it. Um, it's been hijacked, I think, by feminist speak, um, what maybe postmodernist ideas, those kind of things. I'm an English major, so I'm very familiar with the indoctrination in the arts, especially on our campuses. Um, I will say Texas A&M Commerce is not by far radical. The English department there was what I think to me very, um, very moderately, moderate thinking. I never felt I was being radicalized, but they were there. The ideas existed. And uh, they weren't hidden from us. And, you know, we were exposed to, I think I was exposed to some really like postmodern feminist ideas, certainly. Um, but without naming names, because I loved all my professors there. I think they did a great job. But I know that it's there. I see the radicalization in the, in the universities. I've seen it with my own eyes. So I, I definitely agree with that's there needs to be a lot more, um, there needs to be a lot more conservative thought there to balance. And that's kind of the thing. I think you need a university as balance. You don't need too much liberal idea. You don't need too much conservative idea, but you do need a little of each. You know, you need some of both to really decide and challenge the young people to decide where they, where they stand a, a little bit, um, maybe a lot of it. But anyway, so I changed teams, but I'm still working in big tech. So obviously I cannot go public with this. That way, I knew that right out of the gate. So I mean, during this time as well, in my big tech job, here comes kind of CRT rolling in and all these trainings about equity and things like that. And, 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 um, and I never, you know, I still don't mind learning about that. Hearing people's stories, I think, is important when it comes to acceptance. That's really where that's really where the rubber meets the road is hearing having people come in that have different experiences than you. And so that's kind of what was happening. But it was always I found it to be out of place. There's nothing wrong with the trainings themselves. However, I felt them to be out of place. This is a workplace. We don't, you know, we come here to to do techie things again, not trying to name the company I work for, but it has nothing to do with what we sell and do here. And so I started to, that started to kind of not upset me, but worry me. I said, well, I mean, as a conservative, I'm not safe here. I am not this. I can't be a conservative here. Um, and, and, and that went on for a little while where, where I, um, loved a lot about my job and I had great bosses and great coworkers and I didn't know if that's, you know, could I leave something like that, you know, and, and I thought about it, I prayed about it and what do I do? 
Um, and then another opportunity came along, and so I took that opportunity, and I did leave that world. And that's the only reason I feel safe enough to make this video today, is, is that. So that's kind of my, you know, I, I uh, will say that I, there was a coincidence that happened where I didn't share something on Facebook, but I commented on someone on a conservative person's Facebook post. And I didn't really realize that all of my friends could then see that. And it kind of outed me accidentally to a lot of people and I deleted it as quick as I could. And right after that, I was kind of, my work started to get put under the microscope a little bit, um, semi-suspiciously, although I don't. I don't have any proof of that, so I'm not gonna wield an accusation, but it did seem as though right after that, I was looked at a little bit differently by some people at work, but that's all in the past now. Like I said, no hard feelings. They're all great people and it was a great company, whatever it was. You probably could look pretty quickly and figure it out, but there were, you know, nothing to say bad about that company. They were, they were great. I'll always defend um, that job and I'll defend them as well. And that was it. Then I, I voted for Trump. I, I really, you know, went in conservatively and I changed a lot of the things about myself. I started to, I quit drinking. I began to try to change things um, other things in my life, tried to be a little more fiscally responsible, tried to be, um, you know, a little more conservative in action, definitely as Christian as I could be, although far from perfect, I'm a work in progress. And that's really my story uh, of, of walking away from the Democratic Party to come to the Republican Party. Um, I'm happy to be able to put this video there. I know I've missed the walk away movement. It's kind of gone away, but we're, it's still out there. I mean, you know, that's why this channel is called the red wave. I want to see examples. You know, what is your story? Is this similar to my story? Uh, do you have experiences that are similar to mine? Um, if you just hate me because I'm not a Democrat anymore, I mean, I guess I can't stop you, but I don't hate you for being a Democrat and I, I, don't, I don't buy into this democratic conspiracies and and that kind of thing. I, I think that, that uh, the Democratic Party is, is a little more radical, certainly, than ever. But whether or not I think that that's purposeful or part of some grand design, I just don't know. I don't, I don't think I believe that. Um, and certainly the, with the issues with the pandemic, I definitely lean a bit more conservative. I mean, I'm, I myself am vaccinated, as is my wife. Um, that was our choice, actually, for our honeymoon. We needed to get on a cruise, and we needed it. So that sort of did push our decision, but it was our decision, and we made it, and I think we made the right one. Um, but yeah, there it is. Walk away. I am an outed conservative now uh, in a lot of areas. I obviously accept... Uh, gay marriage. So come at me, bro. I'm going to be making more videos. We're going to be discussing a lot of conservative issues. Hopefully talking some Thomas Sowell, who is a personal hero of mine. And it's great to see this kind of resurgence in his career. Um, read his books. Challenge you. If you, before you want to hate on me, why don't you read Discrimination and Disparities? Just read it. And, and, um, I'd love to hear anyone's thoughts on that book, especially. And I'm trying to read the rest of this as well. But that book especially just blew up my top on the way I thought about dealing with issues. So it's kind of why I bring it up. Well, if you've watched this far, thank you so very much. Please subscribe and like. I'm going to be making plenty more videos. I'm going to get, I'm going to get a better background. I'm going to get better lighting. Just give me a little time on that. Uh, but thank you for watching. And... Have a wunderbar day.